So today I'm going to give a quick talk about chartering the Filecoin roadmap in 2024 and a number of priorities for the Filecoin ecosystem. You guys may have seen our talks this week, but this is really meant to be a one-on-one -on -one to really summarize our big priorities as an ecosystem this year. So thank you everyone for coming. So first I wanted to start with why data today is so important. Today, most of the world's data actually was just created in the last two years. 90% of the world's data was created in the last two years. Just think about that for a second. And in fact, by 2025, 463 exabytes of data will, will be consumed by everyday consumers. And each self-driving car, you may have seen this around San Francisco, actually creates 1.4 terabytes of data. So today, we really do live in a data economy. Data is the world's most important currency today. It's moving faster than any cryptocurrency. And that's something that we are trying to fix with Filecoin, is really thinking about how do we make sure that there is re resiliency in data and that data can be affordable for everyone that needs to use it. We also have been doing a lot this year around Filecoin and AI, because as you guys have heard in many sessions this week, AI is a buzzword, but it's also been something that we're seeing everyday consumers start using. If you talked about AI a decade ago, it was still imaginary by your grandmother or your father, and today everyone really is using it. And the wonderful part about data that isn't centralized, it doesn't belong in the hands of four major monopolies that own most of the world's data, is that you also have a lot more transparency over the source of data, how it's manipulated over time, and also preserving that it actually came from the source that it said it was. So an example would be um, today, we are living in a year where there's most more elections around the world than ever before. A lot of people are concerned about manipulation of images, manipulation of news, and we can really prove the source of where that data is coming from, starting with the way the data is uploaded online today with proof of storage. And so we have trust in proof of storage, we have scale and cost, Filecoin today is a fraction of the cost when it comes to large archival data sets compared to AWS and other traditional centralized storage providers. And we also have the ability to have resistance against monopoly ownership. If you guys remember a few years ago, Facebook actually went down for a couple of hours and everyone, all the small businesses and the sub-economy lost access to their data. And so that's what we mean by resilience. It can also mean authoritarian governments around the world suddenly just deciding to shut down the internet because they may not want people to see what's available online. And we really do believe that today the internet is something that deserves to be accessed by everyone in the world at any point in time. Uh, so where are we as a Filecoin ecosystem? For many of you guys, you know that Filecoin has been around for almost a decade now. The original Filecoin white paper was actually written in 2014. Most of the public found out about Filecoin in 2017. But as of today and this year, we have over 1,900 petabytes of data um, available on the Filecoin network. And 2,000 and seven clients have been onboarding their data sets. We also have over 3,400 smart contracts deployed today. And so there's enormous growth when it comes to actual storage on the network by our amazing community of storage providers all around the world. Today we have over 3,000 storage providers. These could be 100 person operations in Singapore or China running huge data centers. These could be mom and Joe Pops. We have these entrepreneurs all around the world making sure that we can store some of the world's most important data. We also have one, we have 14.6 contributors on GitHub, which is huge in terms of the blockchain space. We also have around 8,700 developers and founders actively developing on the Filecoin network. And also, we have a huge community of volunteers. These are people just passionate that decentralized storage should exist, that are volunteers that love to host events and also really spread the word about why decentralized storage is so important. These are our Filecoin Orbit ambassadors and they're around 80 countries and they've hosted over 75 events for us in the past year alone. And so this is enormous and we can't do this without all of our amazing partners and contributors all around the world. So one thing I wanted to really talk about today is our focus areas to really ensure network growth in the Filecoin area. 
We are looking at really growing the client storage pipeline, and that really means getting paid customers, really thinking about storing data. And we've already had a ton of customers today, but really accelerating the flywheel for that. We also want to ensure there's more on-chain activity. Many of you guys may have seen last year, we uploaded Solana's entire block history on the Filecoin network. And we really want to make sure we can have deep integrations with different companies in the Web3 space. And so if you are interested in backing up your chain data on Filecoin or thinking about other ways to partner, definitely talk to us. We also have Filecoin Virtual Machine that, that launched around a year and a half ago. And so we definitely want to make sure we can partner with all of you guys. And then the third is really making sure that we can really think about Filecoin's value add and really accelerate that. So we would love to discuss additional ideas you guys may have around even use cases of Filecoin we've never thought about as a community. So what is the role of the Filecoin Foundation? We are very similar to other open source foundations like the Linux Foundation or other crypto foundations like the Solana Foundation. Our goal is really to ensure long-term governance of the Filecoin network and really preserve humanity's most important information. So we do this in a number of ways, but our goal is really to accelerate the growth of the Filecoin ecosystem and making sure that the community has all the tools and services to really thrive. One of the things, one of the ways we do this is really accelerating all of our storage providers around the world, um, making sure that they have the tools to build and get going. And so these include hot storage solutions, data preserving applications, data feeds and real-time verification. So these are all storage providers you see under us that are really helping thinking about the next generation of solutions we need for storage today on Web 2 and Web 3 applications. We also are working on accelerating enterprise adoption. Around two years ago, we announced the Decentralized Storage Alliance. Really what this means is we are trying to get traditional enterprises in Web2 really jazzed up about decentralized storage and why they should start thinking and developing a Web3 roadmap. And Daniel Leon, who is in the crowd over there, he actually is helping run the Decentralized Storage Alliance, but we have a number of existing Web3 and traditional Web2 storage providers all involved like AMD, Ernest & Young, Seal, Seagate. And so if you are an enterprise or thinking about enterprise adoption and you would like to join the Decentralized Storage Alliance, definitely come talk to us. We have so many exciting things we're doing with them in terms of making sure we can store secure enterprise data all around the world at an affordable cost. One of the areas that many of you guys may have already been aware about, or maybe not, is we work with so many different kinds of clients all around the world. A number of these may include academic institutions like MIT, University of Utah. We also have worked with government institutions like NASA, National Library of Medicine, as well as other ecosystems. I mentioned Solana earlier. In fact, just a month ago, we also backed up the Defiant, their, some of their data, including their documentary on Filecoin. So there are so many different kinds of use cases. If many of you guys used MySpace back in the day, you may have used a tool called the Wayback Machine. We actually back up all of Internet Archive's data. And imagine just how powerful and how much data that is. Those are just a couple of examples of the wonderful kinds of partners we work with. And if you have clients that might be interested in using our technology, definitely talk to our team. We'll be here all week. We also have a number of emerging narratives in the Filecoin ecosystem um, from thinking about how we can back up climate uh, AI data. There's a lot of people wanting to make sure that the data today when they do environmental searches are coming from trustworthy sources rather than scammy news sites. And so with Filecoin and proof of storage, you can actually make sure that the sources of where the data is coming from, they have the right content integrity of trustworthy journalists it's coming from. We've also helped use our technology to fight disinformation. I mentioned earlier today we are facing the most amount of elections this year around the world than ever before. And we want to make sure that people can access and vote in a very secure way. And that comes down to the news sources they're consuming all the way to photographs that they see to make sure 
the voting machines they're using are not fraudulent. And so with Filecoin, you can, you can use our technology to really prove that images and photos and documents are coming from the source they say they are and that it's not tampered over time. So Numbers Protocol actually helped with the Indian government as well as the Taiwan government in fighting online disinformation in their election cycle. So these are definitely some of the amazing use cases from our ecosystem that we've seen today. With that, I did want to leave some time for questions. Um, you can reach me at clara.phil.org, or you can find me on Twitter at tweetclarita.